All right, you guys, gather around, gather around the campfire, or this is actually like a fireplace, and uh, let Grandpa Queso tell you a story about games that have failed. And uh, I, I'm doing this because I saw this article, and we're not reading the article. We're actually going to dive into a slideshow of the 20 biggest flops. But the article reads. <laughs> The day before has failed financially, and it failed so bad, the developer shut down four days after the launch of the game. And we don't have funding to continue, they said. It's insane to think that they lost 90% of their, 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 their user base in four days to the point the developer shut down completely. So I was like, I, want, I wonder what other games have failed so drastically but not quite to this point so i found this article it's from microsoft start espresso 20 biggest video game flops of all time and to kick off this list we got superman 64 from 1999 let me tell you i remember this game it is the most rage inducing game ever I remember 10-year-old me sitting down and being like, I'm going to beat the ring tutorial here. And I could not. My dad tried, and he could not. This game... Dog shit! <laughs> Anyways, let's move into number three. And this is E.T. from 1982. Let me tell you, it's one thing if the game fails so dramatically or drastically, we'll say, that they shut down the studios. This game is credited with the, the freaking video game crash of 1982. It's so bad, they filled an entire landfill fill in Arizona with additional copies of E.T., and they did find it, by the way. I can't remember the name of the documentary. Let's see. Um, 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 um. It doesn't have the name of the documentary, but... There's a documentary, an entire documentary, dedicated to how badly this game flopped. E.T., remember that. Going into Conker's for Bad Fur Day. So, I remember seeing this game as a kid. And what's crazy is, it was positively reviewed. It was a commercial flop selling under 55,000 copies. The game's weird combination of crude toilet humor, vulgar, and sexual content while playing as a cute squirrel meant that the target demographic started and ended at teenage boys, which is 100% true. This game's actually pretty fun. Age of Conan is the next game on the list. I never played this one. It's supposed to be a wow killer, as it says there. Released in 2008, so three years after WoW, and you wonder why you failed. Wrath of the Lynch King. 1999 Shenmue. So Shenmue is one of these games, and my brother absolutely loved this game. It's on the Dreamcast. And they said right here, Shenmue is widely considered to be one of the most ambitious game projects ever. And is responsible for the demise of Sega, and the company pi company's pivot away from creating hardware. $70 million dollars. As much as $70 million to develop Shenmue. $70 million in 1999. <sighs> That's so much money. On to the next one. Elder Scrolls Online. Um, the problem with Elder Scrolls Online was, it says down there, like I was going to say, there were so many bugs. There were so many issues. You could party up with people. This is the one thing that drove me away from Elder Scrolls Online was I was playing with a buddy of mine and he is one of those people that will dive in on whatever you're trying to do and steal, kill, whatever. He'll kill, steal like all day. And he was doing that. And one problem when the launch of Elder Scrolls Online was you could sit there, be working on a boss, be working on, you know, just regular little minions all around. And let's see your buddy, Guyver, I, yeah, that's right. I name dropped you, asshole. Uh, would come in and lay a landing, you know, the, the finishing blow on said enemy. You would get zero XP from like sitting there trying to take this thing out. Whoever lands that final blow got all the XP. And there were so many, so many other issues. This game right here, 
It, it was just so bad. So bad. Which leads us into Fallout 76. Another game by Bethesda Studios. Like, long... <sighs> the bugs in this game. The amount of... Like, the, you would get baited by people to PvP. Like, you, you would be fighting out in the wild with, like, against, like, some random bot, and somebody would jump in the way and have you shoot them, and next thing you know, you're stuck in PvP, and there was no way out of it. Um, now, I heard, now, mind you, we're, what, five years after release, Fallout 76 is much better than what it was, but I'm not about to waste my time on an MMORPG, not my cup of tea. Marvel's Avengers. So this came out three years ago, and it it blows my mind that how bad this game was. And it was supposed to be a live service game, basically, and allows you... There was no substance to this game. This game was very, you know, surface. It was very shallow. No substance. And, like, you wonder why you lost $82 million there, Square Enix. I'm not sure. No, Crystal Dynamics. My bad. Crystal Dynamics. When I go back and I look, I see Crystal Dynamics right there. Sonic Runners 2015. See, this is the crazy part. It's like, I kind of pride myself on being, I love Sonic. I do not remember Sonic Runners at all. An attempt to cash in on the mobile game market. Sonic Runner, uh, Runners was released on Android and iOS. That's why I never heard of it. I don't play mobile games. I uh, can't uh, hopping to be hoping to be a competitor uh, to games like Pokemon Go that took over the platform despite five million downloads. That's a lot of downloads. The game failed to make enough money to keep servers afloat, and just over a year later, the game would be discontinued. That is insane. Such a big IP, such as Sonic, can't even do that. Uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, never played this game, a video game based on a 100-year-old classic novella, is already a strange choice, but the combination of terrible graphics gameplay and story has made the NES uh, infamous as one of the worst video games ever created. At least it didn't create a uh, market collapse. Popular game, uh, gaming magazine Game Informer reviewed the game and gave it a 0.5. If Game Informer is giving you a 0.5 instead of a 7, you know that shit's bad. Uh, while denoting uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. High is probably the most unplayable garbage available on the NES. That's interesting. So this one, I've never even heard of this. Uh, Zelda, The Wand of Gamelon. Not many people know, but the series of Zelda games came out for a short-lived CDI console. So I have heard about these. I didn't know that's what it was called. Uh, despite Nintendo's limited involvement, three games using the Zelda name brand, uh, the Wand of Gamelon being considered not only the worst of them, but one of the only games, the worst games of all time. Oh my god, I can't read today. So, like, this was, like, a live interactive one. Kind of like um, the dragon one and the dungeons. I can't remember the name of it. Battlefield 5. Okay, so the problem I have with Battlefield 5, the graphics were beautiful. But you would go into a map and it was just consumed by snipers. And the gameplay... I'm not much for Battlefield gameplay anyways when it comes to the uh, multiplayer. The campaign for this game was amazing. I will say that. But the, yeah, garbage, garbage multiplayer was so bad. Uh, Daikatana. So Daikatana, John Romero, yep. And if you didn't know, John Romero made Doom, Quake, and Wolfenstein announced a new series. The hype was massive. Unfortunately, the gaming legend Dai Katana failed to meet the sky-high expectations set by its predecessor. I just remember seeing John Romero all over on G4 Tech TV when I was watching it. And like the hype bar around that man is just ridiculous. Duke Nukem Forever. So I've played this one a couple times. I feel... It gets too much hate. Now, granted, 
it's a Duke Nukem game. What do you expect? You expect like he's going to be doing you know blow and hookers in the bathroom. It's Duke Nukem. Come on now. Um, he didn't age well with time. It's one of those ones like yeah. Um, we're just going to leave it at that. I beat it. It's just a meh game. Uh, Simpsons Wrestling 2001. I don't remember this one. Um, it says, uh, theme wrestling game was announced for the PlayStation's fans salivated at the idea of getting a brawl as your favorite iconic characters. Unfortunately, the game massively flopped with IGM referring to it as the most horrific, uh, demol- demolition of a license ever. I don't remember it. Kingdom of Amalur Reckoning. So the good news about this game is, is that it did flop, but this one had a redemption arc. It's actually been remade and it's, you know, yeah, it says right here, failed to reach even half of that, uh, need to sell over 3 million copies to break even, but failed to even reach half of that number, causing not only the studio to go bankrupt, but almost bankrupting the entire state. Wait, what? There's an entire state that backed it or something? No, wait a second. You got, you got me interested. So when the game was released in 2012, it not make uh, ruptures, praise. Um, it doesn't say what state, but it's economic Japan quickly. I'm. I'll have to read that later. Well, a potential new video right there. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077. So the problem with Cyberpunk was that it got pushed out by CD Projekt Red because it wanted to make the shareholders happy. And that's what a lot of game studios fall into line and problems with. And the problem with Cyberpunk is that it did that. It pushed it. It promised too much. Didn't. It did not produce until now. We're three years, roughly, since the launch of Cyberpunk 2077, and we have finally gotten basically what they wanted to launch on launch day. Um, I haven't, I need to play through it. I've heard nothing but good things about the updates. Still kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth because it was like, you know, I'd be driving the car and like end up in the middle of the map. No Man's Sky, another one just like Cyberpunk, promised too much, did not fuck, did not produce and epically failed um i did play it six eight months ago and like the updated version is actually pretty good i've never heard of this one beyond mist nearly flat bankrupting its developer was this a sierra nope cyan worlds and then the final one was rise of robots 1994 made by mirage this game was released for a number of platforms in 94 with a revolutionary graphics and a track sound uh, soundtrack designed by Queen guitarist Brian May, causing fans everywhere to see it as the next great fire fighter. However, the game's size led to a laggy gameplay and computer releases restored unbelievably on 13 separate floppy discs. You know, that's one thing I do remember is like when you would buy a game, it would come with like five, six, seven, eight, ten floppy discs. It was ridiculous, which uh, had to be swapped out each time a new character would be used. I do not remember that. The game was poorly received, and within three years, its developer closed down for good. That is insane. The question I have is, do you guys remember any of these games that flopped? Because that's uh, that's insane. There's quite a few on there I've heard of, and I remember, and there's quite a few I had no idea about. Anyways, you guys, y'all take it easy. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you later.